Hey everybody, Last Outrider here bringing you another video. <clears throat> Normally, I save my comments for after the reading. But I read this one in advance, and I want you to look out for three things. One, there's a reference to Shai Halud. For those of you who don't know, that's from the book Dune. Uh, two, references to the Borg. And three, references to the Overmind, possibly being the Emperor, Overmind of the Tyranids that are. Let's get into it right now with Skitari War Cohorts. Each Skitaris is but a single cog in a war machine that spans the entire Imperium. Yes, if you want to know, Skitari is plural. One Skitari is a Skitaras. Controlled by the Neurosync imperatives of their masters, the Skitari are organized into war cohorts, capable of overcoming any foe. They work in glorious concert. Every footstep or pull of a trigger optimized to further the cause of the cult mechanicus. The mission of the Skitari is to steal enlightenment from the galaxy and impose in its place order. Yet, for all the vaunted objectivity and logic of the cult mechanicus, for all the cybernetic replacements they embrace, the tech priests are still driven by all too human emotions and desires. Their war cohorts are just as often sent into battle as part of a private agenda as it is to further the Omnissiah's cause. Listen to that. Let's look at the little revel revelations there. We now have tech priests as generals. The cult mechanicus, if they wanted, could sit there and pull out 500 million, million Skitari to just march on your world under the total control of a group of tech priests. This means Forge Worlds could attack Forge Worlds, in theory. I guess that's the idea, because that's what's going to happen in case one cult mechanicus army <laughs> fights another cult mechanicus army. You're going to have to ask yourself, how could that even happen? This is how it happens. They're under the control of the tech priests, and tech priests are apparently still very, very human. Either way, the Skitari themselves do not care. They fear neither the heretic, nor the demon, nor the alien. For them, it is enough to serve the Omnissiah's will as espoused by his holy prophets, the tech priests. Even in death, they offer sacred data to their invisible masters high above. In return, they receive doctrinal sacraments for every new day of war, and they are grateful for it. Now you may wonder, what is a doctrinal sacrament? Actually, I talked about that in the last part. Apparently, being a Skitari drone isn't that bad of a life. Why? They're, they're not forced to do what they're doing using punishment and pain and other types of draconian measures. They're doing what they do because their brains are being flooded with happy drugs. Okay? They are extremely happy people. They love doing what they're doing. That is how the Adeptus Mechanicus ensures absolute loyalty. Not through punishment, but through pleasure. That is the daily, uh, as they call it, um, sacramental doctrine. Is that they just flick a little switch and every single happy thought, every single happy memory, every single happy orgasmic feeling you've ever had in your life, bam, you get to experience it in your off time. And then when they want you to fight, 
they turn it off and say, uh, go kill a few people, and you'll be rewarded every single time you do. So don't feel bad for the Skitari. They're not quite the Borg drones as you might imagine. Let's see. What else do they have? Oh, they receive their doctrinal sacraments for every day of war, and they're grateful for it. Every battle is a chance for them to feel the holy motive force enter into them, possessing every synapse and ingram of their brain, and slaving them to a higher consciousness. Remember what I said at the beginning? Any uh, hints about the overmind here? A little tyrannid action going on? Let's go on. Those who feel the bliss and happiness of the Omnissiah's touch will fight like lions. Every shot, every blow calibrated for maximum lethality. Though such individuals usually go to the great maker soon afterwards, those that survive are treated as saints amongst their woke war cohort companions. Even those fugue states that see such God-touched individuals adopt elimination protocols outside of an active war zone are soon forgiven and the death toll ignored. What did that just mean? That means sometimes a Skitaris can go a little crazy and his, uh, as they call it, elimination protocols get activated when they're sitting in a barracks somewhere and they just start shooting everybody about them. But it's okay because those individuals were touched by the Omnissiah and they're forgiven and the death toll, as they said, ignored. Now, look at that great maker. If you don't know, in Dune, that's what they called Shai Halud. The worms on the planet are called the great makers, but never mind. Next, we will go on to the history of the Skatari. Where did they come from? How did they evolve? And this is another Tyranid uh, reference for you. The original maniples to cross the desert reaches of Mars on foot were armed only with galvanic rifles. They escorted their masters. At this point in time, remember, the tech priests are not in orbit. They're actually walking across Mars. So this is a long, long time ago. Uh, they escorted their masters from north to south across an equatorial belt infested with cannibal servitors and rogue machine intelligences. Now that sounds small. But think about what they're talking about here. Rogue AI is what they're talking about. Artificial intelligence roaming across Mars, probably from the days of the uh, Jutlerian Jihad. Butlerian Jihad is what they call it, or what I'm calling it. What's the Butlerian Jihad? The Butlerian Jihad was the time back in human history when... Uh, people used to make basically thinking machines, as they call it in 40K. Artificial intelligences, robots that are just as smarter, smarter than people. That's why they got rid of them all. And now cogitators and um, navigators for the ships and servitors are used because it's illegal to make any artificial intelligence. It's illegal to make a machine in the image of a human being is what the cult mechanicus first um, rule is about technology. So apparently, some still survived from that time, and they exist on Mars as rogue machine intelligences. Now, from that time, which is a lot longer than the time of the Imperium, that's far longer than 10,000 years ago, when Skatari were like that. And since then, they've evolved. As you can see here, as the centuries marched past, these escorts, remember at first they were just escorts for text priests walking on Mars. These escorts were refined over and over again 
until the current iteration evolved into the battle maniples of the 41st millennium. Many variants of these maniples have been codified from the Autan Automata of the Legio Cybernetica to the teeming Auxilia Ordinatus. But the core fighting formation remains the war cohort. A Forge World's Skitari legions are divided into a number of macroclades, lots of new words here, which are, in turn, broken down into cohorts and maniples. The vast majority of Skitari war cohorts are not born into battle by armored machines or aircraft. They simply walk to the front line without stopping. Even should they have to start the journey months in advance of their allies, they will wade through poisonous swamps and bubbling lakes of tar and toxic sludge to arrive at the front line on schedule. Rank upon rank of Skitari marching around chains of Onagar doom crawlers in imitation of Mars's nomadic caravan. What was what that? Caravanserias? Yes, I'm not kidding. This is actually the word they have there. I'm going to spell it. You try to pronounce it. C A R A V A S E R A I S. I've never come across that word before, so I'm going to assume that they simply are going to say nomadic caravans, but whoever is writing this has a thesaurus that they decided to use. Their tireless pace echoes the consistency of their dutiful souls. It is said that a Skitaris would rather walk himself to death than disobey a direct imperative. How's that? Okay. And by the way, that's a little, um, a little, uh, <laughs> I think that was taken from one of the X-Men movies. If you remember that, they gave, they, I think they told Stryker to, somebody did, somebody did, somebody gave him a mental imperative. It was, it was, I forget who, and they told him to just keep walking down the street. And then at the end of the movie, they still see him. His shoes have been worn away. His feet are all bloody. And he just keeps walking because they gave him that mental imperative. So basically, that's what the Skitaris are like. Uh, they don't have vehicles. They don't fly. They don't grab shoot. They don't teleport. They don't do any of that. They simply say, hey, walk you know, 5,000 kilometers or 3,000 miles in that direction and make sure you make it to the front line at exactly 3 o'clock on this day, six months from now. Thank you. And they'll do it. This is the Borg again. I think you can see the Borg because you can, that, well, essentially that's exactly what happened in Star Trek, except that they beam down, you know, 500,000 Borg, and they just walk through a city, uh, assimilating everybody. And, and that's about it. What do you do? So, another thing they said is that the Skitari Legion are, have, a, have a divisions. So first you have a legion. A legion is then divided into macroclades. M-A-C-R-O-C-L-A-D-E-S. Which are in turn broken down into cohorts and maniples. There you go. And also notice that they said their mission is to march through the galaxy, stealing enlightenment and technology and replacing it, replacing it with order, whatever that would mean. Uh, basically, I think, again, it's the Borg, the original Borg, not the late Borg. I'm talking about go back to the original episode with Q. 
those Borg didn't even acknowledge that living things existed. There were no males, no females, no personalities, nothing. They were just interested in technology and data. The living cultures and people and organisms on the planet that created this technology and data were utterly unimportant to them. They didn't even perceive them. That's why you could just cruise on through a Borg ship and nobody would stop you because they could give a damn about living things. Unless, of course, you interrupted their activities. In which case, they would stop you and you'd be done. So, that's what we learned this time. Until next time, bye.